Now, of course, the opening story I'm going to open with isn't the most um, jovial story, but I do think it's important to just be aware of our own mortality. I think for for the for the most part, I feel like in the West, we seem to have a very divorced relationship when it comes to our mortality. We seem to exist in this kind of um, we seem to be um, happy in our bliss. No, it's happy. ignorance is bliss. Seems to be the kind of um, mindset that we sort of live our life with. As long as we don't see it, we don't believe it. Credit, debt bills whatever it may be as long as we, we feel like if we ignore it enough it'll just go away which obviously isn't the case and i feel like we definitely saw that with covid right i felt like certain governments especially within europe they were attacking covid or the pandemic as if they could save everybody as if there was a possibility they could ensure that we got to like a zero deaths sort of situation or sorry zero covid situation which if you listen to any of the experts even at the height of COVID, they all said that was impossible. You were always going to lose some people along the way, unfortunately. But if you wanted to um, ensure that the economy you know, didn't tank, that people's mental health didn't suffer, domestic violence didn't go through the roof, people's kids' education didn't wane, then you had to kind of take a calculated risk and accept the negative consequences of opening up society but also understanding that if you do so, that you're going to lose some people too, right? You're going to lose part of your population are unfortunately going to perish. Some of them, of course, with underlying health issues, but some regular healthy people will end up suffering as well because people are out and about spreading the virus, blah, 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 blah. So um, it's pretty evident that we don't really like to think about death, but I think it's important to kind of keep it somewhere within your mind. Maybe not the front of your mind, maybe to the side, maybe to the back. I don't know, but some it's something to keep in mind. And the reason why I bring this up because it's this heartbreaking story, courtesy of the New York Post, regarding a guy that I don't really know, so because I don't really follow American football, but I thought it was heartbreaking nonetheless. Steelers Dwayne Haskins dies after being hit by a dump truck in South Florida. Absolutely tragic. And I think the kid was in his 20s or something like that. Madness, right? So the article says, Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, which is, of course, one of the most... um you know, prestigious um, positions in American football. I know that because of Tom Brady. It says Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Dwayne Haskins was killed Saturday morning when he was hit by a dump truck while walking on a South Florida highway. Imagine how that must have felt being hit by a dump truck. A dump truck is essentially a, like a bin lorry that what we have here in the UK. Imagine how that must have hurt. Hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm hoping the, his passing was instant in some way, shape or form because that sounds brutal. I don't really know why he's crossing a highway in the first place. Um, to be fair, maybe the, maybe there is a crossing there, but I do remember one thing. When I went to America, so a very long time ago, I went to New York, which probably isn't really um, comparable with Florida, maybe in terms of how big the roads are. But that's one thing that really caught me off guard. The roads are huge, which is why you need to kind of abide by the the flipping signs on the, on the street because a lot of drivers, first of all, they don't really check the roads there's a lot of i saw more people checking their phones in america than on the new york sorry in like a that two and a half weeks that we were there a week and a half than i've ever done here in the uk people are always on their phones because they kind of just go through autopilot they see a green light and they just assume positions are waiting so they always kind of blitz through junctions so you have to really stay and also the roads are like um deceptively deceptively wide the kind of like have you ever, have you ever played cricket before and then you think whoever's got the ball and you know they're going to throw it at the stumps is it right and then you think you can get to it quicker than they can throw it but obviously you can't physics so same when it same when it comes to the american crossing which is why you always have to wait for the green man to go so but yeah tragic anyway regardless it continues Haskins 24 has been in South Florida to train with um, other Seattle Steelers quarterbacks, running backs and wide receivers. The accident happened at 6.37 a.m. So he was probably on a morning run, probably going out to get some breakfast. God almighty. On the I-59, I-595, west of the I-95 interchange outside Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International Airport. According to the Hollywood, sorry, according to the Florida Highway Patrol, Haskins was killed in the accident, but officials did not reveal why he was walking on the highway, said Lieutenant Indiana Miranda, Highway Patrol spokesman. He was just walking on the highway and got hit, says Miranda. The driver is in full cooperation with the investigation, she told the Post. Former Ohio State standout had been in the NFL since 2019, first with Washington and then as the third string quarterback back with the Steelers. The Steelers re-signed him as an off-season to a one-year contract worth 2.5 million. So he was kind of bouncing around, maybe didn't have a club, maybe sorry, maybe didn't have a team, um, trying to get his career restarted. Um, and then this happens. God in the off-season. Oh my God. It says here, I'm devastated at the loss of 
Um, I'm des des devastated and at loss for words for the unfortunate passing of Dwayne Haskins, says Steelers coach Mike Tomlin. He quickly became a part of our Steelers family upon his arrival in Pittsburgh and was one of the most hardworking, both of the hardworking, one of the most hardest workers, both on the field and in our community. Dwayne was a great teammate, but even more so a tremendous friend to many. I'm truly heartbroken. Our thoughts and prayers are with his wife, um, Kaylabra and his entire family during this difficult time. So yeah, RIP Dwayne Haskins, man. What an absolute tragedy. And again, a reminder of just how of just how precious life is. One moment you're out on a morning jog or you're on your way to get a bagel or just hang out with some friends and the next minute you're getting hit by a flipping dump truck and your life is completely gone and all your family and friends are mourning your loss and it's just a complete shock to everybody. Um, so do what you can with the time you have available. Honestly, live life to the fullest. And that doesn't mean, you know, indulge in ridiculous hedonism and all that sort of nonsense but try and live a full life that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to experience things fully i think a big part of that for me was going out sober more often than not um if you know my history of going out for the most part had to do with kind of raving and putting on parties and being a dj which n naturally involved a lot of kind of um involved a lot of drugs a lot of alcohol and just a lot of kind of ridiculous nonsense but then over time i started to understand that i actually loved being outside at night and meeting people and going to cool spaces and visiting interesting cities around the world and seeing how their nightlife operates i love that side more than i love the getting on it side and i wanted to experience and remember those experiences far more right than just it be a complete blur so i decided um to just kind of put the sort of drinking and everything else on ice and sort of treat going out as basically going out right going to experience these spaces listen to djs remember the sets um you know i think some of you guys maybe i haven't maybe ha might have noticed i'm not sure if you have but some of the reviews i do when i go to clubs there's clear difference of me saying hey i went to this club and it was really cool i remember this i remember that then the previous times so it was just like a blur I was just rambling about nothing now i'm clearly going with the intent of like trying to experience and be in the moment i do little things like you know when i'm outdoors especially in a new city i don't use my phone or public transport unless it's look it's for directions i try and i not have my headphones in um, i'm not reading a book i'm trying to absorb everything around me just so i can be centered and in the moment and actually experiencing every single thing that i have to experience in that situation at any given time and even more so when it comes to having conversations with people i try to center the conversation you know with the person that i'm speaking to and try to maybe try a bit deeper in their life if they permit me to um i try not to speak too much from eye and eye point of view and try and speak to them and what they're going through and bloody blah, blah 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 and maybe try and find some common ground but essentially just trying to have as many um positive constructive fruitful worthwhile whatever that phrase is um ex connections and experiences and meetings with people so that when my time does come i can be content in that i lived a full life that is all I want. And I think that's what we saw with Virgil. Weird example to make, but I think part of the, as troubling and as upsetting as it was that Virgil passed, right? Oh my God, what happened to Virgil, right? Big up um, Little Dirk. That tune's absolutely sick um, with Gunner. But one of the kind of slight comforts about Virgil passing was that he absolutely went for it. He went pedal to the metal, even more so towards the end of his life. I think he got his diagnosis of um, cancer, like what, 2019 or something, right? Which definitely coincided with him just putting his foot on the absolute gas tank and absolutely going full throttle for it. And he, he didn't stop and he left in a complete... He left so he, he went so hard, he left flipping off white with or and even Louis Vuitton with like season after season of collections that they can essentially put out on the runway, you know, even though he's passed. So his spirit kinda of, kinda of lives on. And that spirit of hard work also lives on. But just in general, from viewing him through the prism of his own Instagram stories, we got to see how somebody can go for it all the way um, pedal to the metal and um how that can kind of lead to a very full life because for everything virgil did he didn't necessarily come across as the most materialistic guy either do you know what i mean like if don't go wrong he had, he had his nice things he maybe showed up a couple of nice cars here and there but he usually kept that stuff storm and most of the times he was always sharing you know going to meet new people collaborations he was working on ideas or inspirations or you know stuff that he's seen things coming out like just experiences like sharing those things with everybody and i think that was really one of his kind of um true 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 um superpowers and something that i feel like we should all try and do in our little way 
So again, RIP Dwayne um, Haskins, like RIP, honestly, a true, true tragedy. Um, you know, thoughts and feelings go out to his friends and family and everybody connected to him. I can't believe that happened, man. It's really, really tragic. Honestly, really, really tragic. Like God almighty.